Right, so Keir Starmer is now all of a sudden realising he's lost the Muslim vote, has he? Late now, isn't it? Starmer has been too busy listening to his pro-Israel backers to care, hasn't he? His declaration, denied ever since, but never apologised for, despite going out on national radio that Israel had the right to commit war crimes in Gaza through withdrawal of water and power echoed around the country, echoed around the world, and has not been forgotten. People are organising against Starmer and some of his chief hangers-on with vulnerable majorities and seats with large Muslim populations. And now polling is being conducted by the party as alarm really sets in on how bad the Muslim voting demographic, something Labour has always been able to rely on, now is. There are large numbers of people who have been who have supported Labour for years, despite being taken for granted that this is now the last straw, that this is a party that has gone too far, does not care about their Muslim brothers and sisters around the world, and therefore it's time they took their votes elsewhere. And alternatives are opening up for them. Right, so Labour losing the Muslim vote. This is a topic I've visited before, but necessitates revisiting on the basis that now all of a sudden, somebody might have got it through Keir Starmer's thick brill cream skull that his party might have finally lost a key demographic on their way to the general election. They already need a far larger majority than the Tories do for a majority due to boundary changes, due to campaign spending limit changes, and due to voter ID rules that the Tories have all brought in to hedge their own bets and favour themselves. So Labour can't afford to be losing anyone. And I generally don't think they thought they were. Their national polling being so ridiculously high, perhaps they bought into their own Kool-Aid. It's no wonder the Tories are trying to rig things like mad. But equally, Labour and whoever Starmer is listening to couldn't countenance anyone leaving their party, given the hack of things the Tories have made of pretty much everything. The economy, migration, housing, inflation, Brexit, you name it, they've stuffed it. But Starmer has too. And actually, it's too obvious to just go straight to the situation in Gaza here that I think is the straw that broke the camel's back. We have to go back before that, because this has been a long time coming. Starmer, upon becoming leader, ostracised many on the left when it became readily apparent everything he had stood for was a lie going into that Labour leadership contest. That, of course, led to all the purges, ongoing accusations against many members for anti-Semitism. But no other form of racism was ever taken nearly as seriously as that was. That has been borne out in both the Labour Leaks report and the Ford report, which have both been roundly ignored insofar as their findings are concerned. Martin Ford Casey found there was anti-black and Islamophobic racism within the party, and that it is not taken as seriously as anti-Semitism is. This is shown for all to see on the Labour Party complaints page on their own website, if you care to go to take a look. If you go there, you can see a bespoke option for anti-Semitism complaints. But all other forms of racism have to use a general complaints page. It's blatant. As for the Labour Leaks report, which showed the appalling and often racist conduct of people working against the then Corbyn leadership, rather than focus on the actions evidenced, Starmer has obsessively wasted cash trying to find out who leaked the report instead. But there are so many ex more examples, and often these involve Starmer himself. Two years ago, for example, on Twitter, Starmer put out a tweet referring to Islamist terrorism in remembrance of the death of Lee Rigby. What did the perpetrator's religion have to do with that? Rigby's family didn't want his death politicised, so away goes Starmer and does just that, of course. Associating Islam with terrorism, though, was appalling, and there was never any apology. Starmer doesn't do apologies. Racism has become a feature of Starmer's imposition of candidates, too. Boundary changes saw his allies Steve Reid and Sarah Jones pick their new patches in London, whilst black left-wing MP Bel Ribeiro Addy has been shunted where she's been told to. Two days after that, a selection was held in Copeland, for the Labour candidate to stand there. The local favourite was an Egyptian Muslim named Joseph Gayuba. After having to put up with the rancid anti-Corbyn MP Jamie Reid for so long, Labour had lost this seat and were keen to win it back, as you can imagine. But let the locals pick their own candidate. Starmer can have that. Well, Copeland CLP has been denied their choice because Starmer and co have, at the due diligence interview, produced a photo of Gayuba taken with a former Labour councillor. And the councillor in question had apparently waged a racist campaign against Gayuba and is currently in prison having been convicted on child sex offences. Yet somehow Labour have deemed this to be Gayuba's fault in that they've used it as their reasoning, or at least in part, to deny him a position on that Labour long list, thus leaving the way open for Starmer to parachute someone else in, whoever he likes, someone more of his sort. The entire Copeland CLP executive quit over that. Not the first time executives have gone by the wayside. And that's another issue for Starmer's election prospects. 
when so many experienced campaigners and organisers have left in disgust at him imposing candidates like he has been. Of course, since October 7th, things have only become more brazen, more obvious, more stark as to how anti-Muslim Starmer's party is. Not least Starmer himself. Remember his trip to Wales last October? He decided on a spur of the moment after he'd been visiting Port Talbot to drop in on a Muslim centre in South Wales. Supposedly damage limitation after making that now infamous withdrawal of food and power comment on LBC. He said he managed to make it worse for himself by putting out a tweet saying, I was grateful to hear from the Muslim community of the South Wales Islamic Centre. I repeated our calls for all hostages to be released, more humanitarian aid to enter Gaza, for the water and power to be switched back on, and a renewed focus on the two-state solution. Oh, the two-state solution was being banded around then as well, wasn't it? I'd forgotten about that one. That's another two-faced ping-pong ball on that one, isn't it? Not that he meant it then. Then he did again, then changed his mind. Then David Cameron suggested it, and so Labour now backs it again. That's where I think we are. I don't think... I, th I might have missed a two-faced incident there. I don't know. Maybe. The worst of it was no doubt, though, that he told Muslims in South Wales to release the Hamas hostages. I don't think they were being held in Wales, Keith. All Muslims are the same, then, are they? You think they've all got a, a hotline to Hamas to do these things? Are they all Hamas to you? Never apologised for that either, did you? Starmer doesn't do apologies. The thing is, he clearly knows he has a problem here, but he can't help but keep making it worse. October and November see in Islamophobia Awareness Month, and last year was the first time in Starmer's thus far four-year-long leadership, four years too long, where he chose to acknowledge it. So damage limitation again is at play. It's already on the cards here. Apologising for his conduct can't be part of that, though. He put out a video acknowledging Islamophobia Awareness Month, but without that apology, of course. It just underlined in the end all the previous times he's caused ire amongst Muslim communities and just made people more angry. Even when he has a chance to do something meaningful, he can actually follow through. The words of the horrific Israeli ambassador to the UK, Zippy Odavelli, the first sign the two-state solution was dead, as far as Israel was concerned, led to calls for Starmer to not appear with her anymore. But being the hardened, ardent Zionist without qualification that he is, Starmer has ignored that. And although, as far as I'm aware, he hasn't actually met with Hotovelli since, he hasn't said he won't either. All of this followed by his rhetoric backing Israel, backing war crimes, backing supporting them despite them conducting genocide right now, despite the ICJ ruling which Starmer again, and despite being a former human rights barrister, he still hasn't passed comment on, has ignored the ICJ ruling, really, just as much as Israel have. So he has big problems, and to ascertain the scale of it, he's now polling Muslims to see just how bad things are. I can imagine that one of his more vulnerable skivvies, his shadow health minion, was streeting us, squealed about how much bother he's in, and something needs to be done, with one in four streeting's constituents being Muslim and then demonstrating on more than one occasion outside of his constituency office against his pro-Israel position. The streeting is heavily funded by people with links to the Israel lobby, is a Labour friend of Israel too, and has an independent candidate selected by those organising against him within his constituency to see him lose his seat. And she's a British-Palestinian woman at that, Leanne Mohammed, making it all the more delicious a prospect of streeting losing to exactly the sort of person he deserves to lose too. But streeting is just one potential casualty. There are easily some 30 Labour seats where the Muslim vote makes a difference. One unnamed front bencher, according to The Guardian, who have broken this story on this polling being conducted by Labour amongst Muslims, uh, does seem to sum up the situation quite well. They've said, we know we've lost the Muslim vote and at the very least their trust. The Muslim community is no longer a safe voter base for us because of how we initially responded to the war. So we're just focused on damage control. We all know it. The Muslim vote has been one of the staunchest, most loyal Labour votes. And Starmer has blown it. It's not just streeting that faces organised independent candidates running to unseat them. But as one of the most disliked Labour MPs going, there are a few, aside from Starmer himself, who possibly deserve it more. So meet Leanne Mohammed in this video here. She deserves the very best of luck. And the people of Ilford North certainly deserve an MP who actually represents them. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.